Well, this green is an album for friends, a personal record, and uh, to hell with airplay and sales. Maybe it wasn't just their time. Some things don't click to that time, which, you know, it's kind of shocking looking back and seeing how great it still is a, as an album. If you look at the context of when it came out, yeah, and everyone's going really wild and freaking out, and, yeah, you know, r and is turning into heavy metal, Led Zeppelin, and, you know, people are throwing their clothes off, and, you know, and, and, and then Ray turns up dressed as Max Miller. <laughs> the kinks were out of whack with British tastes uh, in 68, we did want to look to America. I, I felt more akin to the, to the Kinks' British Music Hall sense, sensibility. The Kinks were not forthcoming as characters. If you look back on YouTube and look at their interviews, they don't want to be doing interviews. They don't want to be having the picture taken. They don't want to be talking to anyone. See, the Beatles, I'm loving it. OK, so the record didn't manage to find an audience. But who knows? Perhaps one day it'll end up connecting with someone. I'm just glad we stood our ground, celebrated this somewhat eccentric land. And as for the Village Green and all those great characters, they're here in the songs. <laughs> Kings were an uncool band. We still are very uncool, and uh, which saved us in the end. If you make a record for an audience, there's always a chance that it will start to lose its luster. If you make a record that is deeply personal to yourself, then you know you've created. You know, there's a resonance. There's something genuine in that piece of music. It's kind of created its own time, really. It doesn't sound psychedelic. It doesn't really sound like the late '60s. It doesn't sound like anything else that was going on around that time. And, um, and therefore, I feel it's timeless, really. It's a cult album. And uh, thankfully, lots of people like it and fond of it. Well, the Village Green is album is one of those records that this has just got this incredible reputation now. And it's deserved because um, it is an extraordinary collection of songs. It's the best Kinks album. Village Green album is, I think, and uh, it's the um, and the Kinks are one of the best bands you know that England have ever produced. It's as important a record as Sgt Pepper's, which on a global scale, of course, is Sgt Pepper's, and you know we all know what that meant. Um, it still means, but um, the Village Green is, I, it's for me anyway. It's a sequel. That's one of the albums that I'll go back to, you know, when you know, I'm working with different artists and, you know, sometimes I'll kind of listen to stuff just to kind of, you know, get inspired. And, you know, the, the Kinks is absolutely, you know, Village Green Preservation Society is one of the ones that, you know, is definitely go to. Some of the subjects he was writing about, things that would be of no concern to most people and yet have really beautiful little details that he's spotted and put into a song. So that would be a definite influence on my writing. It's so obvious that how many musicians love it because you, you see it in other songs. It appears in so many other songs. You know, there's a bit of Johnny Thunder which appears in In the Crowd by the Jam. There's, a, there's the beginning of, do you remember Walter, which whenever I hear Mr. Blue Sky, I go, this is gonna be, this, ooh, they've, they've updated this. And, and then, oh, of course, oh, it's Mr. Blue Sky. So, um, and that is people paying homage. The first one that springs to mind is Blur. Not sure Damon would have a career without Ray Davis. You can see the kinks, that the thread went forward through us. I think it went forward through people like Blur. Um, and I think you can detect it in a lot of other bands, uh, possibly the Franz Ferdinands, the Kaiser Chiefs. You can see the kinks thread going on there. Uh, I think any band that doesn't try too hard to be American and or international 
and just allows themselves, if they're from Britain, allows themselves to be British. You, you can't help but tip your hat in a big way towards the kings. It goes into Ian Dewey, goes into us, goes into Blur, Lily Allen, a number of other people. You know, black comedy, but with a bit of kind of going. They were very similar to Blur in, in, a, in a lot of ways, or Blur were very similar to the kings, I should say. They had an incredibly hard-working kind of uh, songwriter, a kind of nutcase on guitar, who, who vented everything on, on his instrument. Um, kind of down to earth drummer and a, and a sort of groovy, stylish bass player, you know? <laughs> Possibly the most kinks thing we ever did was Respectable Street, which is totally and utterly what I saw out of my window and what the neighbours were banging on the wall every time I put the record player on or, you know, I'd look at the caravans that people would buy as status symbols and just leave them in their gardens all year long and then for one week they disappear for the holiday, you know. And to me, I, I knew at the time this Uncle Ray would approve of this, you know. Our house in the middle of our street Our house in the middle of our for me, if I could equate it to my own career, it would be our house, you know, that, for us, was exactly the same. It was a kind of mythical idea of what house we all would have lived in. Our Rise and Fall album is very similar in that sense, yeah, because it's, it's set around Park, which is Primrose Hill, and it's set around all the characters that we grew up with. I know that the Kings influenced Weller greatly and the Jam, and the jam influenced us greatly. So it's a kind of linear thing there. It lived with us for a long time, that record, and it was, and it still is one of our favourite albums of all time. And uh, so, it, you know, we would go straight from our flats the next day to go recording and um, it would rub off, definitely. The thing with those bands is they're not ashamed of sounding British, singing their own accent, right about subject matter that, that could happen where they grew up. Village Green Preservation Society. Oh, one, two, three, four. We are the Village Green Preservation Society. God save Donald Duck for the villain variety. We are the Desperate Dead Appreciation Society. God save Strawberry Jam and all the different varieties. Preserving the old ways from being abused. Protecting the new ways for me and for you. What more can we do? I love the man, you know. I love his work and, and what he's given me and influenced me and um, and so many other people as well, you know, and his work lives on and always will do. You know, the Kinks have always been sort of a, an influence on me. You know, I always was drawn to this juxtaposition of this very dark lyric over something that could be sort of very old-fashioned. He became a character in my life and, uh, and I listened to him quite a bit, so... <laughs> Um, I'm sure he kind of infused me with his style of writing and I'm sure it was in there somewhere when I started writing my own songs shortly afterwards. One of the greatest things I, I learned from Ray was that, yeah, just observing what's going on around you and, and, and deconstructing it a bit, but still, you know, loving it, you know what I mean, even though it may not be perfect. I wouldn't be a songwriter if it weren't for the Kinks. Paul McCartney and Ray Davis are our greatest songwriters he has possibly written songs on his own that are better <gasps> i'm sorry about this i'm committing heresy that are better than lennon and mccartney i don't think lennon and mccartney have ever come up with something as poignant as waterloo sunset 
I don't think they've ever come up with a little symphony like Autumn Almanac or Shangri-La. I don't think they've ever come up with the quite the social commentary of Sunny Afternoon or the the romance of days and oh I'm so sorry I'm so but it's got to be said I love being within a band. It wasn't the greatest band in the world. We had moments when nobody, nobody could beat us. God save the million dreams. Hallelujah! So who knows what the future holds for us or the village green and all the characters we sang about? All I can say is people often change but memories of people can remain. One day we'll be free. We won't care, just you see. 